I was born in 1966 at Mother's um, Hospital in Clapton, uh, East London, now known as Murderer's Mile. Um, it's pretty much in the heart of Hackney. My parents, my mother, Mavis, she came to England when she was 19 years old, just slightly after the uh, wind rush. She left her native Jamaica. It's a long journey. At that time, it would have felt for someone coming from an island like Jamaica, like traveling to the moon. Um, she was a very brave woman, but she was incredibly ambitious. She had a fighting spirit. She met my father in 1956. My dad at the time, he was from the east end of London, you know, not too far from here, he was born in Oxton. And he came from a family of builders. Uh, one of his friends, funny enough, um, who he met, one of the first West Indians was a guy called Billy Hill. And uh, Billy and his wife, Sadie, um, were friends with my father. And my father sold Billy uh, paraffin and allowed Billy to establish a route to local West Indians who, you know, who were living in these areas. Um, Billy had aspirations to want to actually set up a club um, in 1954, which would have been the first West Indian club in the country. My dad knew he'd have difficulties getting a license because to get a dance license would have been virtually impossible for a West Indian. Um, coming in would face a lot of racism and stuff like that. So my dad um, stepped up and became the director of the company for him. And in uh, 1954, they opened the Pepper Pot Club on 60 Green Lanes. At that time, the West Indian community were very close and um, they trusted each other and they built collectively together. It was a community family. And they grew, my parents grew, you know, with the schools of my father being a brick loud, determination of my mum. Um, they started to buy property and they started to rent property um, to fellow West Indians in order to give them a little bit of a better lifestyle because at that time it was very brutal. I remember my mum telling me a story. She had three of her friends come over from Jamaica. Um, they were her very, very close friends and they stayed at the same house. It was owned by a Jewish landlord because obviously Jewish were the dominant property owners around Stamford Hill and East London. And they were actually the only people to actually rent to uh, black people because the racism was so intense at that time. And one day she arrived home from work to find all of her belongings was on the street. So when she wanted to find out why, what was going on, she was informed that her two friends had bought some fresh water coconuts from down at um, the market and had obviously came back and tried to break them open on the steps of the um, house. The landlord was alerted to what was going on and he evicted everybody. And she made a promise to herself she would never be in a position where anyone could, you know, take a roof from over her head. So she was determined to buy things, have property and, uh, you know, be able to shield her people, which she'd done. As a young person growing up, racism I found difficult because, you know, I didn't have the experience or the understanding how to deal with it. And, you know, it was a question of being, at hard, find, being mixed race, I find it hard to find an identity. What do you do? Are you, are you black? Are you white? What side? You know, give an ultimatum. What side are you on? Okay. When I got to about 18 years old, I realised an incredibly good trick. Being mixed race, the skin I was given was the greatest asset I ever had because it meant that I was able to delve deep into both cultures, you know. I could go to any part of, you know, West Kingston, okay, I could, and I have done, you know, to some of the, the most dangerous garrisons there are, and meet and talk with people, you know, and we hold each other on the same respect. I could go to the most, you know, the deepest dens of East London or South London, you know, and I could sit there with the, the deepest of Cockneys, the deepest of Britain's underworld, you know, and I could hold the same respect there because I know we speak the same language. And I realised this is the greatest thing ever I've been given because I'm not putting a tag on myself, you know. I am mixed and mixed is beautiful because mixed means I'm black and I'm white. I have the best of both worlds.